emotions of an intense postseason on display. Deep left center field. It is gone. Oscar Gonzalez sends the Guardians to the division series. Hello, New York. The Yankees are the American League's champions. Their quest for their 28th team championship has only just begun. Beautiful October night in New York as we welcome you from Manhattan to the Bronx and the Yankee Stadium for game one of this division series matchup between the Yankees and the Cleveland Guardians. After watching the scintillating bottom of the ninth in Houston and the Jordan Alvarez home run to win it, I'm not exactly sure what we can do for an encore, but we will give it a shot. Along with Ron Darling, I'm Bob Costas. On the face of this, it may seem like a David and Goliath matchup. After all, the Yankees hit exactly twice as many home runs as the Guardians did this year. Their payroll is roughly three times as large. And head-to-head -head this season, they won five out of six. But these teams have not met since July. And the Guardians, who were just knocking around 500 in early September, then went on a tear, won 24 of their last 30 then proceeded to win two straight against the Rays in the wild card series to get here. Many knowledgeable baseball people believe that not only do the Guardians have a chance to make this interesting, but they have a legitimate chance to win the series. Having said all that, <laughs> any series that involves the Yankees in 2022 must begin with a discussion of Aaron Judge. And Aaron Judge's historic year, Bob, when you think about it, Roger Maris hit 61 home runs in 1961. Now, 61 years later, there is a new home run champion in the American League. 62 for Aaron Judge. 133 runs scored, 131 RBIs. But most importantly, started 74 games in center field. His versatility is the big reason why the Yankees won the AL East. And he managed to make history without histrionics. In many ways, he has more in common with Roger Maris in terms of his humility, his reserve, his class, than with some of his contemporaries. But here's a contemporary we should keep some praise on. Jose Ramirez is not going to be the MVP because of Judge and Shohei Otani. But he has put together yet another season that in most years would merit MVP consideration. And you know what's interesting, Bob, is that Tito Francona, the manager of the Guardians, went to Ramirez in spring training and said, listen, I need you to play with your pants on fire. Why? Because we have such a young team and they will follow you and follow you they have as they are now have this against the Yankees. Pitching pairing Cal Quantrill who hasn't lost since July he's won his last 11 decisions 15 and 5 overall he'll go for the Guardians and Garrett Cole will have the ball for the Yankees he went 13 and 8 for more on Cole we go down to the field and Lauren Shahadi. Bob, he was all smiles yesterday. He said, I get to start a postseason game at Yankee Stadium as a Yankee. I have never done that before, and it's all I've ever wanted to do. We remember the sign. He held it up high. Game six of the 2001 World Series. He was 11 years old at the time. It read Yankee fan forever. So this moment is certainly not lost on him. I asked him, how can we tell if you're on early? He told me, if I can elevate my heater, and if it has late life in the zone and they're underneath it, that's the sign. I I asked Anthony Rizzo, same question. He said, when Garrett's stalking the mound, when he's trying to bully and embarrass hitters, you know he's locked in. He is coming right up, Bob. The stage is set for game one of the ALDS from Yankee Stadium. A beautiful night in the Bronx. First pitch is next on TBS. All the ways you could save and by T-Mobile, home or away. Get coverage beyond the expected this postseason. Sixty-five degree night in New York. Couldn't ask for anything better. Unusual scheduling during this division series. Tomorrow is an off day. Game two scheduled for Thursday, and the forecast for Thursday is very dicey. But for now, we couldn't ask for anything more accommodating than what we find in the Bronx for game one of this series. Garrett Cole headed to the mound, and here is the Guardian lineup he will face. The Guardians hit 127 home runs this year, exactly half the Yankees 254. But they have five guys who stole 18 or more bases. They have the lowest strikeout rate of any team in the major leagues. They make contact. They run everything out. They go from first to third. They do the little things that help you win ballgames. 
Well, it's going to be interesting to see the two contrasting styles, Bob, and how the Yankees try to pitch and hit the ball out of the ballpark slug. And Garrett Cole is a big part of that. His 15th postseason start, another successful year for Garrett Cole. You can see pre and post All-Star had some trouble with the home run ball in the second half. But 200 innings, 33 starts, 13 wins, and 36 and 19 as a Yankee. On the defense behind Cole this evening. In the infield, Donaldson, Kiner Falefa, Torres, Rizzo, veterans all in the infield. Jose Trevino, who had Trevino, who had an amazing year uh, for the Yankees this year behind the plate, traded over from the Texas Rangers. Aaron Judge, we talked about his historic season. Harrison Bader, a late year acquisition, gold in center field. And Oswaldo Cabrera, who's played all over, been Mr. Versatile for the Yankees in only 44 games. The umpires, Jordan Baker has the plate. As best we can determine, the tallest umpire in Major League history at six foot seven. With the exception of Jeremy Rehack, who's working his first postseason game, and Mark Ripperger, who has worked only one wild card game prior to this, the others have considerable postseason experience. Stephen Kwan about to step in. Hit 298 for the year. Stole 19 bases. And had seven triples on top of it. We've seen the pitch com, sorry Bob, seen the pitch com be a problem yep. in a lot of the series because of the noise in these packed stadiums. Jose Trevino back of the plate. And Cole using pitch com. Not every battery does. They do. Cole beat Cleveland twice this year and pitched very well in both those games. Also beat Cleveland in the 2018 division series for the Astros and in 2020 in the makeshift playoff system in the 60 game COVID shortened season beat them in the wild card round that time. His last October outing is one he'd like to put in the rearview mirror. Wild card game at Fenway last October roughed up gave up a couple of homers. Couldn't get out of the third inning. The Yankees season abruptly ended. His 0-2 to Quan, way high and outside. You know, Bob, as Lauren said, though, his first start as a Yankee at Yankee Stadium. A lot of forgiveness can happen if he has a big game tonight with his back crowd. Back he comes on one and two, and it's foul to the seats. Overall, in the playoffs and World Series, Cole is eight and five with an ERA of just under three. Maybe hard for Pirate fans to recall, but he actually pitched in October for the Pirates at the beginning of his career, and then with the Astros, and now the Yanks. Two and two. Already, we're seeing the kind of at bats that the Guardians will throw on you. We talked to Tito Francona before the game. He said Stephen Kwan is everything you could ask for in a rookie leadoff hitter for your ball club. He checks all the boxes. Line to first, and it's right at Rizzo. Easy play for the four time Gold Glover. One breaking ball, all. Other fastballs by Cole. This one down and in, laced by Quan, but right at Rizzo. Ahmed Rosario he hit 283 with 11 home runs. Swings on the first pitch and taps it foul. So it's an interesting matchup for Cole. You have a team that does not hit a lot of home runs, really an Achilles heel for him all mm -hmm. season long, but they don't strike out, which he his bigger games are the ones with a large number of strikeouts. Well, the Guardians had 288 more hits than strikeouts. And in the past, that might not seem significant, but in recent years, overall in baseball, there have been more strikeouts than base hits. So the Guardians have turned that inside out. Two and one. 17 Cleveland Guardians made their major league debuts this season. Some of them as late as August and September. And yet here they are. 
I asked Terry Francona, where you and I asked, how would you deal with this young ball club in this ballpark? No one knows better than Francona. He said, I talked to him, but I made it fun. I didn't want them to be afraid of this situation. The 2-2 two -two to Rosario. Bounce toward the middle. To his left, Kiner Falefa, and he botches it. We'll see how it will be scored. It wasn't an easy play, but a play that generally should be made. You know, interesting, the angle that Kiner Falefa took uh, on that baseball. It would have been very difficult to make the transfer, transfer and throw out Rosario at first base. Rosario has tremendous speed. Scored E6, and it brings up Ramirez, whose history against Cole is a good one. Five for 16 with two home runs. The switch hitter slices one down the left field line, and it drops foul. This ballpark has been very good to Jose Ramirez. In 27 games, he's hit 411 at Yankee Stadium with nine home runs. 18 runs batted in, 21 runs scored. So his two run home run, batting right handed off Shane McClanahan of the Rays, won game one of the wild card series at Progressive Field. Team that does not hit home runs, the Guardians hit two mm -hmm. for their entire three runs scored against the Tampa Bay Rays and won two games. Not only was the pitching great on both sides, but it was so difficult on the hitters. Early afternoon start, shadows creeping across the field. Huge advantage for the pitchers. Took something off, and Ramirez swings and misses. Derek Cole breaking out the knuckle curve early in the game. Lance over at Rosario, who stole 18 this year. And his 0-2 to Ramirez. A ball and two strikes. Trevino back of the plate has been excellent. Every defensive metric puts him at the top of the list among American League catchers and generally speaking despite the error a moment ago by Kiner Falefa the Yankees are a much improved defensive team. Yeah and even if you use the metric of eyeballs Trevino all year has been outstanding behind the plate. Three infielders on the right side of the diamond for Ramirez. When Josh Donaldson came over, he still, though not quite the hitter he once was, is elite defender at third base. Kiner Falefa generally good at short. Glaber Torres back where he belongs at second base. Rizzo, four-time gold glover at first base. Harrison Bader, who's tremendous in center field, was for the Cardinals and now for the Yankees. Their defense all the way around is so much improved from a year ago. Slap foul, still one and two. You know, Bob, when they got off to that 52 and 18 start, those were the two things that people had seen the Yankees last year talked about their defense and their running of the bases mm -hmm. that improved under Aaron Boone. For those of you who don't recognize him without the flowing locks, <laughs> yes, that's Harrison Bader, newly shorn. Another one two pitch, ripped foul. So Cole has already unleashed 16 pitches facing his third hitter. 49 year old Aaron Boone in his fifth season as Yankee manager. The runner goes swing and a miss throw down from Trevino. Can't be handled. Rosario gets the steal as Ramirez strikes out.
Well, this is what you're going to see from the Guardians. A lot of attempted steals in this series when they get on base. Try to push the envelope. It looked like Connor Falefa might have dropped it on his helmet for the tag, but lost control of the baseball. So Rosario safe at second. Ramirez swung at a pitch almost a foot inside to strike out. But nice athletic play by Kiner Falefa, but could not hold on to the baseball. Oh, Donaldson there in the shift. Yeah, in Hard the shift, eight. sometimes uh, <laughs> it's difficult to keep That's track right. of who's where. That won't be a problem for broadcasters starting next year when the shifts will be outlawed. Trying to figure out what Aaron Boone's problem is here or the issue he wishes to discuss. I guess he wanted to know if that play was reviewable. If the tag was on long enough, I guess maybe. Another look. It's Donaldson, the third baseman, who's covering. Oh, the ball's slipping out of his hand as he tries to make the tag. From that angle, you can see it. So there's little dispute that Rosario should have been called safe. Swing and a miss by the first baseman, Josh Naylor. He hit 256 with 20 home runs. Terry Francona alongside the veteran pitching coach Carl Willis. Naylor is one for 11 against Cole, but the one was a home run. A lot of fastballs uh, against the first two hitters. A lot of breaking balls to Ramirez, and here are the first two to Naylor. Check on Rosario, and the 1-1 pitch In. misses at 97 miles an hour. I think Naylor was asking Jordan Baker if he called that a strike because he barked out. Yeah. No. And he thought maybe he called it a strike. Did sound a bit like that <laughs> even from up here. Rosario reached on an error. Stole a base as Ramirez struck out. Two and two. Naylor wasn't just trying to hit that one out. He was trying to hit it to the upper deck. Derek Cole passed from Gidgey. 249 strikeouts with his 257. Interesting. I always felt that it was Gidry that first got the Yankees fans on their feet with two strikes, anticipating the strikeout. Yeah, Gidry set the Yankee mark during his epic 1978 season when he went 25 and 3. Cole led the American League with 257 and set a new Yankee record in the process. Fly ball down the left field line. Cabrera for a look, but it's well out of play. Garrett Cole threw 200 innings this year, led the league with 33 starts. And another 2 2 coming to Naylor. Full count. Wasn't a perfect season for Cole, but he takes a lot of pride in making every start, pitching over 200 innings. And again, he did it this year. There's a sequence of pitches so far. He yielded 33 home runs this year, one of the highest totals in the majors. And that marred a number of otherwise good outings. Two strikeouts in the inning. Rosario's left at second. 
No score after half an inning in the Bronx. Aaron Boone's lineup, a lineup that produced 807 runs this year, most in the American League, and a run differential of plus 240. Second best in the majors after the Dodgers' ridiculous plus 334. That's how you win 111 games. Aaron Judge narrowly missed the triple crown. Swings on the first pitch. Lofts it into foul ground. It would appear down the right field line and just out of play. So Judge hit 311. Luis Arise of the Twins won the batting title at 316. Judge led in home runs by a lot. Beat out Jose Ramirez and RBIs by a bit but also led in virtually every other significant offensive category and by a wide margin. Just an epic season. Quantrill gets ahead of him 0 and 2. Jammed him and that is a foul ball. A lot of people would say this monumental season just propels him toward a place in Monument Park but that's if he remains a Yankee. That's You'd have to bet that he would because he has respect for the history of it the ballparks favorable to him. He likes his teammates and all the rest but there will be some active bidding including from the San Francisco Giants the team he grew up rooting for. Called strike three. So Quantrill gets the better of him to start the Yankee first. What well, was once a slider when he was in San Diego now has morphed in kind of a cutter for Cal Quantrill. It's quite a weapon. Running fastball in, cutter away, change up to lefties. And when he pitches, it's win day. Last 17 starts, Cleveland Guardians are 16 and 1. He last lost the first week in July at Detroit. 15 and 5 for the year. He's won his last 11 decisions. Had a no decision here in April. So so outing. Six and a third. Six hits, three runs. Yankees came from behind and won the game five to four. No decision for Quantrill. Owen to Rizzo 32 home runs for him this year that is his sweet spot in a four year stretch from 2015 to 2018 with the Cubs he hit 32 31 32 and 32 again and now 32 this year for the Yanks like a metronome what happened on the 31 year Bob slumping <laughs> and in those four years 101 RBIs twice and 109 RBIs twice that's consistency. That's right. Two strikeouts right away for Quantrill. Threw it by him up in the zone. Quantrill's not a strikeout pitcher, so two big strikeouts to start his night. Ramirez, Rosario, Jimenez, and Naylor, a very athletic infield to go with Austin Hedges, great defensive catcher behind the plate. Quan, Straw, and Gonzalez. Straw can get catch everything. Quan's good in left field. Oscar Gonzalez, who won the Second game against the Tampa Bay Rays has a big arm. Glaber Torres with two out and nobody on takes a strike. Missed the last few games of the season with a serious case of the flu. Able to start tonight. Hit 320 in September before he was bitten by the flu bug. Twenty four homers for the year. Fly ball to center. Straw goes back. The ball carrying takes him to the track in front of the bullpen. And he makes it look easy. The Yankees go in order. And after one, 
No score in game one of this division series. Just when it looked like the Rays and Guardians might play from the afternoon into the evening. Oscar Gonzalez took the two time Cy Young Award winner and he won those Cy Young Awards in Cleveland. Corey Kluber out of the ballpark. They win it one nothing in 15 to advance to this division series against the Yankees. And here is Gonzalez. That one's low from Cole. Let's go Oscar. His walk up song in Cleveland is SpongeBob SquarePants. That's what that little poster is about. A little bloop off the fists and Gonzalez is retired. Asked about that. Why is that your walk up song. He said hey. It's a kid's game. Baseball's a kid's game. <laughs> I like his attitude. They didn't just like him in Cleveland on Saturday. They loved him. And how quickly allegiances shift. Corey Kluber won the two Cy Young Awards when he was there. Thanks for the memories but you're wearing the wrong uniform now pal. <laughs> Andres Jimenez. The keystone combination for the Guardians former Mets in the deal at San Francisco Lindor off to New York. They got both Jimenez Woo! and Rosario. Yeah Lindor and Carlos Carrasco. Yeah. Shift on as the 0 2 pitch is delivered and fouled to the seats. The shift was not on until the count went to 0 and 2. The analytics tell them why. Sometimes we can only guess. Another 0 2 pitch. He lays off a ball and two strikes. A couple of things to keep in mind as we talked about the 15 inning game on Saturday. No ghost runner in the postseason. No man on second base to start the 10th inning and beyond. So much more likely that you'd get a marathon type game. This ball is hit hard down the right field line in for extra bases. Jimenez on his way for two as Judge digs it out against the wall and he slides in with a one out double. Bob, when you watch Garrett Cole pitch, he likes to identify the weaknesses of the hitters. He tried to come in twice with a fastball, missed on both times, and this one, Jimenez made him pay with a double down the line. It's a double, not a homer, but worth mentioning. Cole, as effective as he is, as elite as his stuff is, often misses in the middle of the plate, and that leads to home runs. He's given up at least one home run in his last eight consecutive outings, and as we mentioned early, earlier 33 for the season. Here's the D.H. Will Brennan. Give you an idea about this Guardians team. Brennan starting here has 42 at bats in the major leagues. He wasn't even in the major leagues until the latter stages of this season. And they have three guys on the bench with fewer than 100 major league plate appearances but here they are in the division series not all of them on the bench Brennan here in a big moment double A in June but three hit 300 wherever he was in the minor leagues foul back one and two. Brennan was added to the roster on the 25th of September. He's 15 for 42 to this point. That's 357. Guess the big leagues and even the postseason doesn't phase him. Struck him out. They'll have to throw to first. Rizzo has to scoop it. Turned out to be a bit more difficult than you might have guessed. But that's the third strikeout of the night for Garrett Cole. 
So far the breaking ball has been the most effective pitch for Cole but watch Trevino. He tries to fake Jimenez back to make sure he gets him to stop at second base before proceeding to first and didn't let it go. And Rizzo had to make a good play. Not a tough play but a good play. Brings up the catcher Austin Hedges. Hedges is a very good receiver. Not much of a hitter. 163 with seven home runs. Their second catcher Luke Maley also hit beneath 200. So they've added a third catcher. Bo Naylor. Younger brother of their first baseman Josh Naylor because it's likely that somewhere along the line they have to pinch hit. For one of their catchers. Jimenez who doubled with one out is at second with two down. So it's the Guardians who have the first two opportunities with runners in scoring position. The 1 1 to Hedges. Bounce foul, a ball and two strikes. Strike three. Two strikeouts in each of the first two frames for Cole after one and a half, no score. There are heroes and there are villains. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. Here we go. Black Adam, Greedy PG 13. Don't miss the epic action event Black Adam in theaters October 21st rated PG-13. Rather dystopian world it appears to me. Giancarlo Stanton starts it. Big cut and a miss. He was the All-Star Game MVP. Had a home run at Dodger Stadium. Shortly after that had a lot of problems with a left Achilles injury that hampered him through much of the second half. But he began to get his swing back and homered in each of the last three games of the regular season in Texas which gives Aaron Boone and the Yankees some hope that he'll be able to contribute in October. You know he's become a very streaky hitter in the regular season but he's usually been able to find it in the postseason in a Yankee uniform. Rizzo Bader judge two and two. Cal Quantrill is 27 years old, 6'3, 195, from Port Hope, Ontario, Canada. And if the name sounds familiar to Yankee fans, his dad, Paul Quantrill, pitched for a number of teams a generation ago, including the Yankees in 04 and 05. The 3 2 pitch to Stanton. So he stayed with that cutter there against Stanton here, 3 2. That one found a lot. Of the middle of the plate. As you see, Quantrill went to Stanford, completed a degree in engineering in just three years. Foul back. Sort of putting him in the same category as another Stanford grad, Mike Messina, who in three years got his economics degree. And just in case his career turned out to be something other than a Hall of Fame career, <laughs> right. something to fall back on. Walked him to start the second. Warren Quantrill now from Lauren Shahadi. Lauren. 
And Bob, I spoke with Paul, Cal's dad. He told me Cal learned about the game through osmosis, playing in the clubhouse with Derek Jeter or watching the cat and mouse game for himself. He said Cal competes, he has good stuff, but he's figured out what he does well and what he doesn't do well, and he won't beat himself. I asked Paul what he's taught Cal about pitching, and he said without skipping a beat, you know kids don't listen to their parents, right? He <laughs> said, so got it. Yeah, but the genetics help, whether they're yes. listening or not. Osvaldo Cabrera takes strike one. Started the season in the minors. Came up. Three for his first 19 with nine strikeouts. But he carries himself with a kind of confidence, not cockiness, but confidence, that said from the start, I belong here. And then he went on to prove it. Hiked his batting average up to 247. Has some power. Switch hitter. Six home runs. Played multiple positions. Better outfielder than we might have guessed since at first he was billed as an infielder. Had a half dozen assists and limited duty in the outfield. Watch was 1 1 pitch. Cut on and missed. In fact, Aaron Boone said when he first put him in the outfield, many people said he could play there. He wanted to see it with his eyes. And after the first game, he said, We're fine now. He's going to be a good outfielder. Shift once again. With two strikes. Two and two. The Cleveland Guardians only shift 22% of the time. To put that in perspective, the Dodgers shift over half the time. Mm -hmm. And next year, the entire <laughs> league will shift 0% of the time. Sounds like you're looking forward to that. I sort of am. The 2 2. Swing and a miss, strike three. So that's the third strikeout for Quantrill, who's not really known as a high strikeout guy. Get coverage beyond the expected with T Mobile this postseason. Stream your team home or away and in the air with Wi Fi on us. You know, he only had 128 strikeouts this year and 186 in a third innings pitched. Almost every starting pitcher in baseball mm -hmm. seems to strike out one per inning. He pitched to an ERA of 3.38 in the course of going 15 and 5. Got good run support, it must be said, more than six runs per game when he took the mound. Josh Donaldson, not the hitter he once was, so take this with a grain of salt, but over the course of his career, 7 for 17 with two home runs against Quantrill. Can still hurt you if you make a mistake, but as you see, the average down at 222. Stanton a short lead at first he's not going anywhere. And by the Yankees winning the AL East it's players like Donaldson that benefit from the five days rest mm -hmm. after playing every day they can kind of heal up a bit. Donaldson the 2015 American League MVP when he had a monster year for the Blue Jays. Two balls and a strike to him. A glance down to the third base coach Luis Rojas but hard to believe that something's on here with Stanton the runner at first. have one sign hit a homer that's their sign yeah it shortens the team meetings <laughs> it does. Kiner Falefa on deck second walk of the inning Matt Carpenter back from the beyond Terrific player for the Cardinals, but over the last couple of seasons, not very productive at all. Worked on his swing, remade it, went to an advanced hitting lab in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, consulted with his old teammate Matt Holliday, took a triple A deal with the Rangers, then asked for his release. The Yankees signed him, hoping for something. And what they got until he fouled a ball off his foot and suffered a fracture in August, what they got was unbelievable. 15 homers and barely more than 100 at bats. Rolled a second, could be two. 
There's the first, and there's the second half of it. So IKF hits into a 4-6-3, and just like that, potential Yankee rally goes swirling down the drain. We play two with no score at Yankee Stadium. Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. Almost a nice running catch in right center by that guy on the sandlot. That's the ballpark across the street. Community Park. Anybody can play some baseball or softball. That one popped out of the guy's glove. We move to the third. Miles Straw is the hitter. He is a tremendous center fielder. Those numbers come in 535 at bats. No homers. Low batting average. Skies this one to right. Judge is under it. And that's the first out in the Cleveland third. Miles Straw is not the most popular visiting player in this ballpark, owing to an ugly incident, not his fault, an ugly incident in April. Late in a game, which Quantrill had started, the Yankees rallied in the ninth, and Kiner Falefa hit a ball off the left field wall. Stephen Kwan went back, tried to make the play, runs into the wall, he's shaken up. The Yankees rallied to win the game. We'll get back to that in a moment. Here is Quan at the plate. So apparently there were some ugly things being yelled from the lower left field stands as Quan tried to gather himself in the outfield and his teammates came over to support him and Miles Straw took exception and actually scaled the wall mm -hmm. and started barking at the fans which further ignited the situation and bottles and debris were thrown and finally Aaron Judge and John Carlos Stanton walked out to try and calm the crowd 2 0 pitch high fly ball deep right field off the bat of Quan judge to the wall and it's gone and it's the Guardians who get on the board first and once again the home run ball bites Garrett Cole for the ninth consecutive start he yields at least one home run. Remember Kwan in his first step back, a line drive right at Rizzo. So he is on Garrett Cole so far in these first two at bats. Fastball, middle, middle, and that has been the issue for Cole. It's 97 plus, but big league hitters catch up to anything when it's down the middle. Kwan hit only six during the regular season, but got all of that. Another look. And here's Rosario. So the Guardians don't hit that many home runs, but every run they've scored so far in this postseason has come on a homer. Two run shot by Ramirez on Friday, solo shot, game winner by Gonzalez on Saturday, and this one by Quan to open the scoring on Tuesday. Just to finish the story yeah. about Miles Straw, he then said afterwards. This is the worst group of fans in the league speaking of Yankee fans because they were abusive toward him and his teammates and that did not endear him to Yankee fans and even though that was in April and this is the first visit back for Cleveland since then some of these fans have long memories. This is the worst fan base and everyone knows it. That's what he added. Yeah. The 2 2. Did it get him. It did. He checked first the home plate umpire wanted to check with the first plate umpire did he swing. And the answer to that is no. Nope. So he'll take his base. Up and in right off the hands of Rosario. It's usually where that handmade bone can be sometimes in that wrist area but it didn't seem to bother Rosario as he goes to first. And it brings up Ramirez who struck out on the first. Switch hitter who generally speaking is a better hitter left handed than right.
It's interesting. Aaron Boone said, I know the numbers might say that turning him around to the right side might be beneficial, but all I've seen over the course of his career, he's great from both sides. If it becomes relevant as the game unfolds, they have two, speaking of the Yankees, yeah. two lefties, Lucas Litke and Wandy Peralta, in their bullpen. They do not have the lefty Araldus Chapman for those who aren't up to date on this. Chapman decided after the regular season ended to go to Miami and then didn't show up for a mandatory workout on Friday and Boone had seen enough. Chapman's performance had been choppy anyway. So he's off the roster and unlikely to be put back on it if they should get as far as the LCS. There was one headline in a New York paper that called him a wall this Chapman oh, a wall this Chapman. Because he did go AWOL. It's the closest thing I've heard to if I'm not starting, I'm not departing. Call back to Gary Templeton. Long time ago. And you know what happened there? Gary Templeton, then with the Cardinals, traded to the Padres for Ozzie Smith. Terrific switch hitting shortstop. Was being interviewed by the great Hall of Fame broadcaster Jack Buck. And he said, you know, if I don't start, I don't know if I want to go to the All-Star game as a reserve. And Jack said, so if you ain't starting, you ain't departing. He said, that's right. <laughs> Line drive to the left center field for a base hit. So Ramirez comes through. And here goes Rosario, who'll be stopped at third on the double by Ramirez. So with one out, a homer by Quan. Rosario's hit by a pitch. Ramirez goes the other way for a double in the left center field second and third with one out and a run already home in the inning. Slider hanging right in the middle of the plate now. Ball has been up here from Cole in this inning. And a bullet to left center field and Rosario has such great speed. If it's not played perfectly by Bader. He is sent. Ramirez led the American League in doubles this year with 44. That's Matt Blake, the pitching coach to the mound. This postseason, bet $5, win 200 and free bets if your team wins. Download the app and get in on the action. So Boone dispatched his pitching coach out to talk with Garrett Cole. Blake now trudging back toward the dugout. Josh Naylor the hitter struck out in the first inning. Infield in but Torres in shallow right. Interesting defensive alignment now for the Yankees. So they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They want to play in, but stop the beginning and get an out if Naylor hits the ball on the ground to the right side. Makes sense. Don't see it often, but it makes sense. In a wild card playoff game in 2020, Naylor went three for three off Cole. Although Cole and the Yanks won the game. Chopper, Rizzo has it. He'll come to the plate. They've got Rosario hung up, but he may get back. And he does. And the bases are loaded. Fielder's choice. Not exactly what they had in mind. Well, Rosario is going on contact. So the ball to Rizzo. And as soon as Trevino kind of squatted because he thought maybe Rosario was coming to the plate, by the time he stood up again to make the throw, Rosario, with that great speed, was able to get back just under the tag of Donaldson. And he did exactly the right thing darting, immediately going back. 
not conceding that he'd be caught in a rundown. Make them make the more difficult and precise play, and they couldn't do it. Now Saturday's hero, Gonzalez, with the bases loaded. Infield moves back looking for the double play. A little tapper. Donaldson will come to the plate for the force. Rosario is a race. The bases remain loaded. And it's still a 1-0 game. Well, good, solid play here. He didn't think it was hit hard enough to Donaldson, so he decided to come home to get sure, get the shore out. That was the right choice. Yes. So now with the bases loaded and two out. It's Andres Jimenez. Who doubled his first time up. Down and in ball one. the ball and a strike. Well this makes sense Jose Ramirez with the most Cleveland two out RBI's this year with 37 right behind him Andres Jimenez with 36. One and two. Cole's 60th pitch coming up as he tries to close out the third. Not just yet. He wanted it. Crowd wanted it. Didn't get it. Good pitch. Looked like it could have been called a strike. It was all over that strike zone. A six foot seven inch Baker didn't call that low strike. Jimenez started the All-Star game for the American League. Had a heck of a year. Hit 297 with 17 home runs. Swiped 20 bases on top of it. And the Guardians leave the bases loaded. Sigh of relief from the sellout crowd. Day during the postseason and compete to win $50,000. Enter MLB Base Chase in the MLB Play app or through MLB.com slash play. Restrictions apply, so see official rules for details. Jose Trevino starts it against Cal Quantrill in the bottom of the third with the Guardians leading one nothing. Trevino was great behind the plate for the Yankees and for most of the season a surprising contributor with the bat. But in September he slumped his backup Kyle Higashiawa Higashioka surged. And hit well over 300 in the season's final month with some home runs mixed in. Trevino strikes out. Fourth K put in the book by Quant Quantrill and between innings. Terry Francona spoke with Lauren Shahadi. Terry, you told me Cal can't lose the play. What stands out to you? Right now, he's got a couple, you know, a couple walks. Fortunately, he pitched out of it. But other than that, he's been attacking really well with the fastball and the slider. You were aggressive early in the count. Was that the approach coming in? The guys that are aggressive, Naylor, Oscar, we don't want them to go away from who they are. That's, that's who they are. They're going to be like that. Appreciate it. Sir. You got it. 
Thanks, Lauren. Thanks, Terry. Called Tito by many. Reference to his dad, Tito Francona, right. who had some big years with the Cleveland Indians, as they were then known. In 1959, he had 363. And Terry was a much better hitter than his modesty allows him to yeah. acknowledge until he ripped up his knee and his career was kind of short circuited. Took his legs away. I pitched against him. He was a fantastic hitter when he came out of college. Career resume and an impressive one. It was at the helm when. The Red Sox snapped the curse in 2004, tacked on another world championship in 07, and almost did the same in Cleveland in 2016. They were up three games to one in the World Series against Joe Madden and the Cubs. Cubs came back to win it, took game seven of Progressive Field in extra innings. They snapped their curse, and now it's Cleveland that's waited the longest since 1948, 74 years. Happens to be 74 years ago today that the Cleveland Indians beat the Boston Braves. So one team since then has changed its name. The other team has twice changed its location. And Bader may change the scoreboard. This is into the seats. Harrison Bader, former Cardinal, applauded by another former Cardinal, Matt Carpenter. Even up at one. Judge who struck out to start the game. Well, not a lot of production and an injury challenge year for Bader this year. But his sixth home run of the season and his biggest one. Local kid went to Horace Mann in Bronxville, New York. Comes back and delivers in the postseason. Got the count in his favor and got a fastball. Line foul by Judge. One and two. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, put it this way. He said, We're going to attack Judge, but with respect. We'll attack him with respect, but we will attack him. There's Willis, age 61. Coached five Cy Young Award winners. A couple of stops in Cleveland. CC Sabathia, Cliff Lee, Shane Bieber. Cy Young winners for him in Cleveland. Felix Hernandez in Seattle, Rick Porcello in Boston. Looks like the first change up there to a right hander by Quantrill. The numbers say that Judge is vulnerable to the changeup. Did he hold up? Nope, he's gone. Second time tonight, he struck out. Jeremy Rehack, first base umpire with the quick call. And the right call. And the right call. Pulled it back so quickly, but he was right on it. Rizzo struck out his first time.
Bader still in the afterglow of the blast he just unloaded. You want to not get a word in? Be next to a guy who just hit a home run. <laughs> Unless that guy is Aaron Judge. There you go. He tends to be more reserved about it than most. Well, you can be reserved when you hit 62 yeah. of them. Yeah. It's funny to watch Quantrill. A lot of pitchers stay nice and still while they're taking a sign. He just does not stop moving. Seems a little jittery out there, but maybe that's just him. That's his nature. Despite the home run given up to Vader, he's done a nice job inside to the righties with his fastball and going in with the fastball to the lefties as well. Home run by Stephen Kwan in the top of this inning. Briefly met at 1 0 Cleveland. Bader has tied it in the bottom half. Chopped to first. Fielded there by Naylor. He'll go to the bag himself. And that finishes the Yankees in the third. And it's 1 1 after three. Why would you panic? That's the number one reason. Why would you panic the first game? That sends a message, you know? Big time, baby, big time, big time. Yo, baby, keep fighting, keep fighting, let's go. Yeah! Hey, great at bat, bro, great at bat. First pitch of the fourth inning to the DH, Will Brennan. Chases Cabrera into the corner. And he comes away with the catch. <laughs> the fan may have been fighting him for it, but in the end, since he came away with it, why not? Give him a high five. <laughs> well, we talked about the infielder turned outfielder here in the big leagues, Cabrera. And there are a lot of people fighting for the ball, but the pro got it. Applauded by Cole. He has really distinguished himself in his brief career in the majors as an outfielder. A moment ago, we were listening to Nestor Cortez encouraging Garrett Cole, cheering Harrison Bader on. Cortez will be the game two starter. There he is with Kyle Higashioka. Second Yankee catcher. Here's the play by Donaldson. Skids into foul territory, fires from there and gets it. Austin Hedges retired on a terrific play by Josh Donaldson. So two web gems here in the fourth inning for the Yankees. Well this is what they've seen in the infield all season long an uptick in their defensive play. Beautiful play by Donaldson knew he had enough time to get up and fire a strike to first base. Good range for the veteran. And Booz greeted Miles Straw once again as he headed from the on deck circuit to the plate. Cortez, whom we saw a moment ago, is the game two starter, which is scheduled for Thursday, could be pushed to Friday if the bad weather forecast proves to be true. Shane Bieber, 2020 Cy Young Award winner, will get the ball. Pitched brilliantly in game one of their wild card series against the Rays. So Bieber against Cortez. Then in game three in Cleveland, Tristan McKenzie, who also was lights out in the wild card series against the Rays, goes against Luis Severino for the Yankees. 0 oh 2 to Straw. Interesting circumstances. Scheduled day off between games one and two, another scheduled day off between games two and three. But it could turn out that they might have to play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday back here for a game five if it happens. No travel days in between. The postseason will feel like the regular season. And will change pitching strategies. Yes. Cole 
called strike three. And with the help of his defense, Cole works a perfect fourth. Later tonight, Padres and Dodgers on FS1. Phillies and Braves, game two on Fox. Padres Dodgers, game two on FS1. Bottom of the fourth, Torres, Stanton, Cabrera for the Yankees in a 1 1 game. A high pop into shallow left. Coming in is Quan. Quantrill has done a nice job of getting up and in on those right handed hitters with his arm run on that fastball. You were talking before that Lindor and Carrasco provided their middle infielders. Mm -hmm. Well, the Clevenger trade got Quantrill from the San Diego Padres. John Carlos Stanton now with one out and nobody on. He walked in the second. Strange season for the Yankees. After the first 60 games, they were 44 and 16, and people were talking seriously about the possibility of them surpassing the 1998 World Champion Yankees who won 114. As it turned out, they didn't even win 100. They stopped at 99, but that was more than good enough once they righted themselves to win the division rather easily. But at one point, they had a 15 and a half game lead, which shrunk to three and a half. They looked like an entirely different team for a while when nobody but Judge was doing much for them offensively. And they actually played under 500 for the next 60 games after being 44 and 16 through the first 60. A Jekyll and Hyde act, but in September, they looked like something much closer to the team everyone expected them to be. Yeah, that month of August was the worst that they had had since 1991. 2 2 pitch. Full count. There it is. Pop toward third, Ramirez. There's the second out. Need to focus on the game? Just tell Siri, turn on Do Not Disturb. Two up and two down for the Yanks in the fourth. Osvaldo Cabrera comes up. Struck out on the second. He had played, at least as a starter, only four games in the outfield in the minor leagues. You would think watching him after only a handful really of major league games that he'd been doing it his whole life down the left field line into the corner and a foul ball was the best compliment you can get from a manager that he's a ball player a guy that can just play anywhere because of his great instincts. Off his fist down the right field line and the catch is made on the run by Gonzalez. After four a 1 1 game in game one of the division series. The MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the MLB. During the postseason, new customers can bet $5 and win $200 in free bets if your team's money line bet wins. Download the app and use promo code HEAT when you sign up. Stephen Kwan's homer gave the Guardians the lead in the third. Harrison Bader tied it up in the bottom half of that inning. That's where we stand now. Top of the order in the top of the fifth. 
Juan Rosario and Ramirez. Most seasons the numbers you saw there for Quan would earn him the rookie of the year award. Yes. Julio Rodriguez of the Mariners probably blocks him. Adley Rutschman who has been terrific for the Orioles will also figure. So maybe the best Quan can hope for is the bronze just like Ramirez <laughs> in the MVP voting yeah. because you know the judge and Otani will be ahead of him. But that doesn't diminish what Quan has done as a rookie or what Ramirez continues to do now as a veteran. Roll towards second. Labor Torres gobbles it up. Let's check in once again with Lauren Shahadi. I was just thinking, Bob and Ron, about Judge and Stephen Kwan and the evolution of leadoff hitters, right? Judge is six foot seven, powered all fields. Stephen is five foot nine, slap hitting approach, fast gets on base. Both Boone and Tito say, I want my leadoff guy to bring urgency and energy. Judge and Kwan both do that just in such different ways. Ron, both a challenge at the top, mm, right? They are. I think Kwan is more of the traditional sure. leadoff hitter that you saw yeah. a guy that'll fight you every at bat put the ball in play he's got some pop like he showed today judges the new monster leadoff hitter that can produce such crazy results Kyle Schwarber for the Philadelphia Phillies another one that comes mm -hmm. to mind Hit 46 home runs this year for the Phillies, led the National League yeah he was second to judge 16 behind. Rosario has reached twice once on an error then was hit by a pitch in center field Bader tucks it away for the second out and it brings up Ramirez you know Lauren Ramirez almost almost left the Cleveland Guardians at least it was a possibility you've got that story Lauren that's right I remember it was April 5th they were leaving spring training breaking camp they were going to Kansas City and nobody on the bus knew if he was going to be there they negotiated for all of five minutes and I talked to Jose yesterday perhaps the most humble superstar I've ever met he said what's the difference money is money but comfortability my family my daughter was born in Cleveland I love the people here and I want to stay he got on the bus and a rally of cries around him everyone was so happy changed the game for them and soon after signed the extension could be a guardian for his entire career. They signed him when he was just in his mid teens the international draft allows that or allowed it at that time out of the Dominican Republic. So he's been part of the Cleveland organization for like a decade and a half or <laughs> close to it. At age 30 still in the prime of his career. And we mentioned in the open that Francona asked him implored him in spring training to play with his pants on fire to be an inspiration to his young team. And he has done that. 3 0 pitch from Cole. Ramirez taking his own sweet time. For a moment, I thought he didn't know what the count was, but he's just going to get rid of the gloves and get rid of the shin guard and stroll on down to first Hitters with a two hit. out walk. <laughs> but to Francona's point, when you have one established superstar on a young team, those youngsters are going to take their cue. From the veteran star. And Ramirez was all in on that. That's his natural inclination anyway. Didn't have to be nudged too much. When you watch this team play, you don't see guys posing when they think they've hit one out and all of a sudden they wind up with a single when it hits the top of the wall. You see guys running everything out. Routine ground balls, they still run it out. Naylor is struck out and reached on a fielder's choice. Two. 
There is Josh's younger brother, Bo Naylor, whose given name is Noah, but he's called Bo because Josh, as a little kid, couldn't pronounce Noah and kept calling him Bo. So we're just stuck. He's their third catcher. Speaking of Bo. The 0-2 to Josh. A ball and two strikes. So again, just to support the notion of how young and relatively inexperienced this Guardian team is, I don't know how much action Naylor will see. He's just a, a safety net because they might have to pinch hit with one of their first two catchers. But he's had eight big league at bats. He's 0 for 8, and he's on the postseason roster. Cole glances over at Ramirez. Held by Rizzo. The 1 2 to Naylor. Line to center field. In comes Bader, and he takes it. Hit it right on the nose, but right at Bader. To the bottom of the fifth. Still a 1 1 game. Duly noted Ernie. Josh Donaldson hits one in the air to right. Gonzalez goes back on the track at the wall. And it's off the top of the wall, it would appear. Or let's see. Donaldson doesn't know. He started to trot, and he's going to be retired. He thought the ball left the park. So did a good portion of the crowd. Gonzalez fielded it. It's a single. And he's put out nine six three. Well I didn't see any sign from any umpire. And great job by Gonzalez staying with it and playing it off the wall. They'll certainly probably look at it. I'm sure. Off the very top of the wall. The kind of ball that could bound either way. That's right. Could have bounded out for a homer. Came back. Donaldson went into a trot could have made second base if he just put his head down and ran the tag there in the out by Naylor at first base not a good play there by the veteran Donaldson going into the trot when he didn't know for sure if it's out now there's a couple of things they can look at at the replay one they'll notice that the ball did not go in the ballpark but secondly was it touched by a fan because if it's touched by a fan on the carom then it's a dead ball and he'd be at first base or second base second base second base pardon me it did not appear to me as if a fan touched it no. but let's see that fan in the pinstripe shirt is reaching for the ball but may maybe <laughs> The tip of one of the fingers of his left hand, maybe. That's going to be an out at first base, I believe. There is no way That's right. that that play can be overturned That's based right. on that. Could have been a homer. Could have been a double. Could have been a single. It is a single, and he but got it turns into an out. Look at that. He's he's already slapped hands with Travis Chapman, the first base coach. Now he's got to try to dart back to first, and he's out. First base. Play stands. Not much faces Francona at this point. At age 63, 22 seasons as a big league manager. Before that on the minors, managed Michael Jordan at Double A Birmingham. When Michael decided to step away from the NBA for a while. So I asked him before the game, how often do you hear from Michael Jordan? So well, he texted me about three weeks ago. Checks in now and then. A 
Well, you don't have to watch many of these postseason games to know that that's going to end up being a big play. Donaldson not or assuming the ball was out of play instead of being on first base. Or even second base. Or maybe second base. Couldn't have got the second because of the way Gonzalez played it. Played it like a pro off the wall. But what if he's sprinting all the way? Including up the first baseline. Maybe, but I, I don't think he has the kind of speed. Yeah. And if he tried for it, it would have been a close play. I said before, Gonzalez has a gun out in right field. Game of inches, they say. And in this case, they're right. 2 2 pitch to Kiner Falefa. That is a fair ball down the right field line. He rounds first, sprints for second. Gonzalez has trouble with it. Now around second, heading for third, and makes it without a play. Well, we watch Gonzalez make a great play. And this is always really one of the toughest plays to make. Is the ball hit hard down the line with a little spin on it? Cutter down and in. Falefa tossed it to right. Well, that ball I thought was against the board and he had to block it, but no, that was right to him. Kind of went right between his legs. I think Gonzalez is in the middle of thinking that he wanted to make a play at second instead of making sure he caught it first. And it cost him at least an extra base. Single E9. Infield comes in for the Guardians. Interesting turns of events here in the Yankee fifth. Jose Trevino struck out his first time. Pop back and out of play, 0 and 2. No one throwing yet, but some activity in the Guardians' pen. Francona's bullpen covered nine innings for him in the 15 inning win on Saturday to close out the Rays. Quantrill is not a strikeout pitcher, but that's what he's looking for here. His 0 2 pitch in the air to center field. It's going to get the run home. Straw runs it down. Trotting to the plate is Kiner Falefa. And the Yankees take a 2 1 lead. <laughs> Gonzalez muttering to himself well, about Quantrill. the ball he mishandled in right. Quantrill would certainly like to have that pitch back. 0 oh 2. On the cutter right over the middle of the plate to Trevino and another big at bat for Jose. It brings up Bader, who had a long home run to left to tie the game at one in the third. Bounce two third, Ramirez. That finishes the Yankees in the bottom of the fifth, but not before the sacrifice fly from Trevino gives them a 2 1 lead. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. Sixth inning, Guardians to the plate. Trailing 2 1. That's pitch number 86 for Garrett Cole. Oscar Gonzalez, 0 for 2. When you think about these two teams and the guys at the helm in the dugout, they have many things in common. One of which is that they come from a baseball family. Aaron Boone's grandfather, Ray Boone, 
was actually a rookie on the 1948 Cleveland Indians who 74 years ago today won their last world championship. They've only won two. They beat the then Brooklyn Robins in 1920 and then they won again in 1948. They've had some close calls since then especially in the 90s and in the early 2000s but haven't been able to win that third world championship. So Ray Boone was part of that. Garrett Cole notches the strikeout on Gonzalez to start the sixth. Ray Boone was just a rookie had only one at bat in that World Series. Bob Feller was part of that team Bob Lemon Gene Bearden Ken Keltner Larry Doby great Larry Doby Hall of Famer. They beat Warren Spahn and the then Boston Braves in six games 74 years ago today. Andres Jimenez doubled and struck out. Cole has notched seven strikeouts tonight. So then Ray Boone's son Bob Boone of course was an all star catcher for many years. Father of Brett Boone and Aaron Boone and in the other dugout Terry Francona's dad Tito had a distinguished major league career himself. And I talked with both of them about it before the game. And the common theme is respect for the game not just understanding of the game but respect for its history and respect for how it should be played. Jimenez bounces one to second. Torres throws him out. Interesting dinner conversations in the Boone and Francona house indeed. Two quick outs in the Guardian sixth. Jonathan Lewisaga has begun to throw in the Yankee bullpen. Will Brennan the DH struck out and then fouled out down the left field line on a terrific play by Oswaldo Cabrera. You and I were talking about this earlier Bob with the off day tomorrow mm -hmm. not afraid to go to that pen and maybe push guys in that bullpen but I think one of the themes we're going to have to look at during this postseason without some off days is how far can you push your starters this year. Well for example Garrett Cole assuming that game four is played on Sunday as scheduled he could pitch game four on four days rest. But Shane Bieber even if they play on Thursday if he pitched in game five on Monday that would be on just three days rest. And if the Thursday game is rained out and pushed to Friday then Bieber will get just one start in this series. And the same will be true of Tristan McKenzie. Among the reasons you give the Guardians a chance the quality of their starting pitching and the depth of their sensational bullpen anchored by Emmanuel Classe. Their lights out closer. The Yankee bullpen has been in flux in the second half of this season. Two out, nobody on on the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Eighth strikeout for Cole to the bottom of the sixth with Aaron Judge waiting to lead it off for the Yanks. Postseason on TBS is brought to you by Royal Caribbean. This is one vacation to every adventure. Come seek. With the Mets having been eliminated by the Padres the New York baseball stage now belongs exclusively to the Yankees and all season long it's belonged to this guy Aaron Judge who struck out his first two times against Quantrill. Hey. 
point of comparison acknowledging that the eras and the circumstances are so different. Judge hit 62 homers in 570 at bats. Maris hit 61 in 590 at bats. And in 1927, Ruth hit 60 in 540 at bats. So roughly within the same homer per time at bat range, roughly. But what happened in that four year cluster from the late 90s to the early 2000s with Bonds, McGuire, and Sosa was a distortion. Which is why so many people view this not just as the American League record or the Yankee record but as a different kind of achievement. Mm. Just check the home runs per time at bat especially for McGuire and for Bonds. The three one pitch to judge. He draws the walk to start the sixth. Have you ever wondered what players say on the field. I want to see celebrities try to hit a fastball. Are you interested in baseball culture in Latin America? Well, check out all those things on MLB Originals at MLB.com slash originals. Rizzo to the plate. Struck out, grounded out. Among the baseball moments he'll always cherish. Happened in Cleveland at Progressive Field. Chris Bryant across the diamond to Rizzo. Last out, game seven in 2016. A 108 year curse finally erased. A dozen years before, the Red Sox had ended theirs at 86. And now it's Cleveland at 74. You know I've always believed it isn't just the number of years you need the close calls the Red Sox had yeah. so many excruciating near misses before 2004 the Cubs hadn't generally been that good but then they had a heartbreaker in the 80s against the Padres and the game that slipped away the Bartman game in 2003 against the Marlins you need the near misses for the thing to have a certain kind of dramatic texture and Cleveland has that. After 1948 they had the great team in 1954 that got swept in the World Series by the Giants but then there was a long fallow period. But from the mid 90s into the 2000s they've had many really good contending teams and they've come close several times. Judge is running. Here's the throw. He steals it. The ball skips away. He pops back up and goes to third. With all of his other exploits easy to overlook the fact that he was 16 for 18 in stolen base attempts during the regular season and he swipes one here E2 on top of it as he advances to third well he gets a good jump on Quantrill I think the ball hit him in the hand and deflected into right center field and it proceeds to take the extra base six seven stealing that base and getting over to third infield comes in. Two balls and two strikes to Rizzo. Labor Torres will be next. He's the best cutter that Quantrill's thrown tonight. He would love to repeat that pitch right here. Here's in at Hedges. They go old school with the fingers, not with pitch comp. Full count. Hedges blocks it. Judge not going anywhere. Both these catchers have done a fine job. Ball in the dirt. Making themselves big, catching that off the chest protector and keeping it in front of them. Gonzalez to the wall. It's out of here. Spike Lee loving it. Yankee dugout loving it. Sellout crowd loving it. Quantrill not so much. 4-1 New York.
Well, the one-two pitch was a perfect cutter. He tried to repeat it here later in the count and just left it over the middle of the plate. And that ball up that was getting by Rizzo all night long in his third time looking at Quantrill, he didn't miss it. The right-hander Trevor Steffen is coming out of the Guardians bullpen and we're coming back to the Bronx after this. Be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. The two run homer by Rizzo chases Quantrill makes it 4-1 New York and brings Trevor Steffen out of the Guardians pen. Stefan was originally drafted by the New York Yankees in the 2017 draft third round picked by the Guardians in the rule five draft. One of seven Guardian relievers on Saturday in the 15 inning marathon worked a one two three eighth inning against the Rays and struck out two. Labor Torres has flied out twice. The book on Quantrill, five innings plus two hitters here in the sixth, four hits, two of them homers, four runs allowed, three of them earned, three walks, five strikeouts. Mile high fly ball into right center field. Who's going to take it? It's Straw, the center fielder, in front of Gonzalez. Well, see the first eight batters. He was on. Top of his game once the error to Gonzalez in right field gave up that run, but again, the home runs by the Yankees have been the difference. We're not sure when game two will be played, scheduled for Thursday, off day tomorrow. Weather forecast not promising for Thursday. In any case, Shane Bieber will have the ball in game two for the Guardians, and Nestor Cortez Jr will get the assignment for the Yankees. John Carlos Stanton walked and popped out. That'll make the seats. With much less fanfare than judges pursuit of Ruth at 60 and Maris at 61 in 2017 for the Marlins John Carlos Stanton hit 59 home runs. Whereupon he was traded to the Yankees and signed a very large deal. Bouncing ball, Ramirez to his left, takes the hop and throws Stanton out. Enjoy the thrill of the postseason with the MLB app. Get daily lineups, live pitch by pitch coverage, and more on our free app with over 150,000 reviews. Download the MLB app today. Two out, two in, nobody on for Osvaldo Cabrera, who's 0 for 2. Cabrera becomes even more important in this division series because the Yankees are without DJ LeMahieu. The inflamed toe, big toe, which had been bothering him for a long time, has now been diagnosed as actually a fractured foot. So he's not on the division series roster. Cabrera's ability to play the infield and the outfield becomes important. Marwin Gonzalez, who's a switch hitter who can play multiple positions, also becomes important off the bench. Makes up for the versatility they lose in DJ LeMahieu. Two time batting champion, once with Colorado, once with the Yankees. 2 0 pitch to Cabrera. 3 0. Josh Donaldson is on deck. Ah. 
when you make a mistake like Donaldson did a while back and your teammates kind of bail you out by putting some runs on the scoreboard you're among the happiest people in the ballpark your mistake becomes mitigated in a way I think of Justin Verlander who's been just magnificent likely will win the Cy Young Award back from his second Tommy John surgery at age 39 just a marvel but he got rocked by the Mariners today and then the Astros come back the Alvarez homer in the bottom of the ninth they win it and if you saw the scrum at the plate the big smile on the face of Verlander not just for his team but hey you picked me up I can't do it every game you ten, bailed me out ten hits and only four innings for Verlander this afternoon no one up in the Yankees bullpen looks like Garrett Cole is going to get the seventh Pen is empty and he's already thrown ninety seven pitches. Cabrera strikes out. Yankees play two on a walk to judge and a long home run from Rizzo. And after six, they lead it four to one. I'm hot. Oh, you are. See you. Uh, three innings minimum. Three. If we're winning more, if we're losing, we'll probably take it off. All right. They're both on you. You don't see them? I see them, but they're not on you. One of them, one of them's got to wave. They won't wave. It's a postseason game. They won't wave. They're nervous. <laughs> hey, baby, you! Hey, baby! Top of the seventh. Austin Hedges facing Garrett Cole. Aaron Judge was not convinced that he and Cortez were on camera because he thought the cameraman should wave to indicate that they were. But Cortez appears to be a bit more savvy about all this. He's been mic'd the entire game. Down to third base, Donaldson across the diamond, plenty of time to get Hedges for the first out in the seventh. Paul, the cameraman, why didn't you wave at Cortez and Judge? I can't read lips all that well. I have no idea what Paul is saying. But in any case, Cortez has been wearing the mic the whole game, but you heard him say, if we're losing, I think I'm taking it off yes. after three innings. He was memorably mic during the All-Star game. Very entertaining. While he was on the mound, while he was pitching. Miles Straw, the hitter. Smacks one off the glove of the leaping Kiner Falefa. For a one out hit. Well, Boone was hoping that Cole could get him through the inning. But now Quan heads for the plate, and he touched Cole for a homer earlier in the game. So Boone's going to go to the wise go right here. Appreciative ovation for Garrett Cole, who leaves with a 4 1 lead. Tees, hoodies, and more. Get all your postseason gear and wear what the champs wear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Now, you know, big sellout crowd here, but we weren't 100% sure this game was going to be played tonight. And for more, and it's shocking, here's Lauren Shahadi. Guys, thank you so much. Wild stuff. Here's what we know. Apparently, one of the stars of HBO's House of the Dragon has decided to take in a ball game here in the Bronx. Officials are hopeful that the Dragon won't breathe fire during game play, but we'll see if he complies. By the way, House of the Dragon is streaming on HBO Max if you want to check it out. Back to you. You know, I kind of feel like Orson Welles, War of the Worlds. <laughs> Maybe we're actually frightening some gullible people that some Rodan like creature is hovering over Yankee Stadium. Do not be alarmed folks. Well, nice job by Garrett Cole getting into the seventh inning eight strikeouts against this Cleveland team and hanging the ball off to Jonathan Lewisica, who missed 47 games uh, with the Yankees right shoulder inflammation when he came back. It was a took him a little time to get everything going but 15 of his last 17 games 
no runs allowed. Stephen Kwan was one for three against Cole, but the one was a third inning home run. First half of the season, the Yankee bullpen was a huge plus. Michael King was just blowing people away. Now he's going to be out for the rest of the year since midseason, elbow problem. They were without Chad Green all year long, Tommy John surgery. There's more. Clay Holmes at the beginning of the season, first half of the season, microscopic ERA. In fact, one wag dubbed him Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> but in the second half, partly because of an aching shoulder, he's been nowhere close to that good. And Neraldus Chapman was in and out, and now he's completely out. So what once was a true asset now is kind of a puzzle for Aaron Boone. He's hoping Loisaga can be part of the answer. Yeah, he'll be trying to figure out that Rubik's Cube all October. Scott Efros was a possible piece. Now he'll need Tommy John surgery. Zach Britton, the veteran left hander, tried to hurry back from TJ surgery, had a few appearances, had no command, had to bow out, just wasn't quite ready to contribute. The 2 0 pitch to Quan is taken for a strike. There it is. There's the mash unit. <laughs> this is Zach Britton, who you mentioned before, tried to rush to come back and wasn't ready. The 2 1 pitch, foul back. De Los Santos up in the Cleveland pad. Right now you'd have to say that Terry Francona's team has the edge in the bullpen over the Yankees. And as is so often the case when we look at modern baseball and what is really a tournament in the postseason the regular season is a prelude. But what kind of team are you now is what matters most the Braves proved that a year ago. Didn't get to over 500 till mid August wound up winning it all. A team like Cleveland could be very dangerous in October. The left hander Wandy Peralta gets up for the Yanks. Sometimes you need some production from people you least expect it. Like Atlanta got from Eddie Rosario and others. Did Quan check? He did. Full count. Not Eddie Rosario, but Ahmed Rosario is on deck for the Guardians. Big leg kick from Quan, able to hold that bat back. Easy call for the third base umpire, Will Little. That is going to find a space in between the shortstop and third baseman. Juan goes the other way for his second hit of the night and the tying run will come to the plate. What an introduction to the postseason by Stephen Kwan. Three bullets he hit one right to Rizzo home run now and a single to the left. There aren't many all or nothing guys in the Guardian lineup. They make a lot of contact. Quan has a home run tonight, but that's actually not his normal game. Hit only six during the regular season. Hit nearly 300, though, 298. I know batting average is in eclipse in terms of what analytics values, but it has to matter for something. Ahmed Rosario. Inside to him. He had 11 home runs during the regular season. He's reached on an error and stole a base, hit by a pitch, and then flied out.
Garrett Cole alone with his thoughts. Draws at second, Quan is at first. Jammed him, bounces at foul. You no, know, Bob, I feel like this Cleveland offense at times does enough to foul pitches off, put balls in play, get people on base in front of number 11. That's really what they're trying to do. Because it seems every time they need a big hit, he comes up with one. Been one of the most productive hitters in baseball for several years now. Toward the middle, Kiner Falafa fields it, steps out of the bag, and turns it into a double play. No runs, a couple of hits, they go to waste. And we go to the bottom of the seventh with the Yankees still up, four to one. For the Geico game summary for bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Which brings us to Inside the Booth, presented by Toyota. So, Cal Quantrill was effective for quite some time, but then the Yankees caught up to him. Well, again, the Yankees are scoring the way they score. Three of their four runs have come on home runs. Uh, two runs shot from Rizzo, the difference. And so now they go to their bullpen once again, they being the Guardians, and Aniel De Los Santos comes out of that bullpen. 26-year-old right-hander from San Pedro de Macorís in the Dominican Republic, which is a baseball production machine. The entire country, but San Pedro de Macorís yes. in particular. That might be the baseball capital of the Dominican. I remember when there was a time from San Pedro to Macorís where you would get some of the finest shortstops yes. in all the baseball. Attendance has been announced as 47,807. That's a sellout at Yankee Stadium. Yanks drew over 3 million this year. You know, Bob, I was talking about how the Yanks have been a character tonight. A couple of home runs to score their four runs. Something out of character for the Cleveland offense is that they've really been stalemated here for three games. Two runs in one game, of course, the 15 inning, one nothing win. One run tonight, 34 punch outs in three games. That's something we talked about in the open that they just don't do. So a little out of character for the young Guardians. It's up to Delos Santos to keep it reasonably close. And if you're Aaron Boone, who told us that given the state of flux that his bullpen is in that his decisions mostly are based on matchups it's not something that's orchestrated by innings this is our seventh inning guy this is our eighth inning guy and so when you look at what the Guardians have coming up the eighth inning the next inning is the most important one because they have the three four and five hitters <laughs> beginning with Ramirez well I'm sure that Aaron Boone has nightmares at night trying to figure out how he's going to get a pitcher that has to get Jose Ramirez out Naylor and Gonzalez. The 0 1 pitch to Donaldson hit through the middle for a leadoff single. So Donaldson is two for two a walk. A weird single off the top of the wall that somehow turned into an out between first and second. And now a more conventional base hit. We mentioned before, Bob, we were talking about a five day layoff for some players, might bode well. For older players, it certainly will. Donaldson with a good night. Ah! 
strike to Connor Falefa, who's one for two. Had a single back in the fifth. Three quarter arm action from De Los Santos. Line drive to Ramirez, who can't handle it. They still turn it into a double play, and that's what happens. If it wasn't intentional, it was a lucky misplay. If it was intentional, it was brilliant. Well, it had a lot of spin on it. Looked like he was just one handing it and wanted the transfer to make the throw to first place, the back to double up Donaldson. He took his eye off it a little bit, and the ball comes out of the glove. So he didn't do that on purpose, but it turns into a yeah. double play. Yeah, he was hoping he could get Donaldson off the bag and turn a double play that way. Instead, becomes a 5 4 3 double play. And Trevino lifts a high fly ball into shallow left field. Quan comes in, calls Rosario off, and that's that for the Yankees in the bottom of the seventh. Interesting evening on the base paths for Josh Donaldson. And it's still a 4 1 game. That was TBS Total Motion presented by Progressive. Now here's what I don't understand because I'm sort of new to this stuff. <laughs> that was or this is Total Motion presented by Progressive. The card says that was past tense but we're looking at something that's labeled Total Motion Progressive. I think it was that is. I think so too. <laughs> I think the card was wrong and I think it's relatively unimportant as we move to the eighth heart of the order. Ramirez, Naylor, and Gonzalez against Low Isaac. Jose has struck out, doubled, and walked. Line drive, base hit on the first pitch of the eighth. Well, Ramirez is a machine as Aaron Boone makes his way out again. One of Low Isaac to face Ramirez. It did not work out. Now he'll bring in the left hander Peralta to face the left handed hitting Josh Naylor. One pitch in the eighth and that's all for Loisaga. And here comes Peralta. That's 430 Eastern time on Fox Padres and Dodgers game two. 8.30 Eastern Time on FS1. The ALDS on TBS continues Thursday with games two of Mariners Astros and Guardians Yankees. Coverage begins at 2.30 Eastern on TBS. See Wandy Peralta's numbers. Left handers only 11 for 71 this year and those 56 and a third innings for Peralta only gave up two home runs one to a lefty and one to a righty. Josh Naylor generally speaking vulnerable to left handed pitching. 0 for 3. Shift on against him. Bounces it foul. Clay Holmes who hasn't pitched in a couple of weeks. Tender shoulder kept him out. Is up now in the Yankee pen. Rizzo Field steps on the bag. Now they're going to get two. Ramirez is tagged out. If they had the makings of a rally, pretty much snuffed out. I mean this is textbook by Rizzo. That's why he's got the four gold gloves.
has wherewithal to catch the ball. It's toward the bag. He tags the bag. Then he gets in the rundown. He runs right into the defender. The late throw. The easy tag by Donaldson. He can't do it any better than Rizzo did it right there. All you high school coaches watching, American Legion coaches, that's how it's done. It's not always done properly at this, at this level. Gonzalez. A ball and a strike to him. Oscar's 0 for 3. A ball and two strikes. Well, Peralta's got a nice sinker, but really his go to pitch is his changeup. Struck him out. Well, that move worked for Boone, brought Peralta in, double play, then a strikeout. And here are your do ups. Two of these guys have homered. Judge is the one who has it. Thanks, Ernie. The ex Indian, get, uh, ex Guardian Indian, when he played for them, getting off to a slow start in Clevenger. James Karinchek out of the bullpen. Another one of the guys in the bullpen for the Guardians that had just an amazing year. Had a scoreless streak snapped on September 9th, 28 and two thirds innings pitched. That was the most in a single season since Dan Spillner. In 1982. Call back about 40 years ago. <laughs> Karen Jack was 2 0, ERA barely over 2, struck out 62 in 39 innings of work during the regular season. <laughs> 1 and 2 to Harrison Bader. Love watching this young man work high energy, straight over the top. Arm action that you don't see from a lot of pitchers. That's out of play. Basically, a two pitch guy, four seam fastball, and a classic 12 to 6 curveball. You can only have that 12 to 6 when you have that release point that he has. Again on one and two. Hop back. Let's see if it stays in. Nope. Well, you can feel Karen Check's energy. Look at him just tossing the ball around. <laughs> Has to be able to juggle with those hands. Yeah, you would think so. <laughs> And he brings home another one two pitch. A little looper in the infield taken by Rosario. Runners at first and second with nobody out. One out there. Go to second. On to first. The triple play to end it. Unbelievable. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the eighth. And here's Aaron Judge. He struck out twice and walked. For whatever this may be worth, coming into tonight's game in 35 postseason games, Judge has hit 230 with 11 home runs. Stirrups. Yeah, Something old school. You don't see anymore. Take 
Oh, one, two. Worth mentioning yet again, it wasn't just the home runs. 62 is impressive enough. And the near triple crown. It's the margin by which he led the league in so many different important categories. And the fact that a lot of big performances historically in baseball, hitting performances, have taken place during a season or an era when those performances in general were up. Home runs are not up around baseball this year. But judges total was out of sight. Yeah, it makes it even more remarkable. Yeah. Right? Measured against what was going on in MLB overall. The one two pitch. Well, he struck out three times tonight. The curveball got him. Mentioned it before, Karen Jack with the two pitch arsenal, fastball straight over the top, and that curveball that never seemed to get there. Judge way ahead of it. Hides the ball so well, too, with that high left front shoulder. Two out, nobody on for Rizzo, whose two run homer in the sixth gave the Yankees some breathing room. You never want to disrespect any opponent and the Guardians have shown that they are a formidable team at this point maybe not all season long but as the season came to a close and as the playoffs began Francona's team is one to be reckoned with you never want to look ahead but the chalk was as the playoffs began a high pop up in foul ground hedges off with the mask and he makes the catch. The chalk was that the Yankees and Astros were likely to meet in the LCS. Yankees therefore probably disappointed that the Astros rallied and beat the Mariners earlier today. MLB postseason on TBS is brought to you by Taco Bell. Peralta remains on the mound. At least for one more hitter. Andres Jimenez had a double, then struck out and walked. At shortstop, Kiner Falefa. Backhands, fires, Rizzo scoops. There's the first out. Rizzo has had quite a game on both sides of the baseball. Two run home run. Started a double play last inning, and this pick from the short throw from Kiner Falefa. Threw a sinker over there, almost in between hop. And he stays with it. With the left hander on the mound, Owen Miller, right handed batter, is announced to hit for Will Brennan, the DH, and that immediately brings Aaron Boone. Out of the dugout. Clay Holmes is ready. Just to complete an earlier thought, yeah. again, you don't want to look too far ahead, but with multiple layers of the playoffs, what you're always hoping for is that the greatest threat is eliminated before you have to meet them. And so if the Mariners had jumped out in a best of five one nothing on the Astros the Yankees without disregarding the challenge with the Guardians might be saying to themselves hey maybe we can get lucky and avoid the Astros if we ourselves can make it to the LCS and we'll be back after this. The time of heroes is over don't miss the epic action event Black Adam. In theaters, October 21st, rated PG 13. You gotta like The Rock, though. 
got to like Dwayne Johnson. How can you not? Well, Clay Holmes has had a, a, a couple of seasons, hasn't he, that you yeah. alluded to before. Unhittable in the first part of the season. Then some arm injuries came in, and he's, he had struggled down the stretch. Hasn't pitched since September 26th. So the guy that we're calling Sherlock Holmes <laughs> then turned into a Jekyll and Hyde deal. There you go. Did that clip him? Yes. First pitch gets the pinch hitter Owen Miller. And what were the odds when this game began that there would be an inadvertent delusion to Arthur Conan Doyle and Robert Louis Stevenson. <laughs> I've been doing this a while. Yes you have. That hasn't happened until now. <laughs> Will Benson now is going to hit for Austin Hedges. Guardians need a runner to make things interesting and bring the tying run to the plate. Every decision Aaron Boone has made so far has clicked. Holmes with the hit batter puts things in disarray. Hard sinker, hard slider when Holmes is right. Benson only up to the big leagues for the first time on August 1st. Now up the plate in a big spot. Is called. Go figure. They've been in a whole lot of postseason games. Venerable franchise. Whenever I see one of those graphics, I always think of one thing that means they're due. 74 years do <laughs> in the most important stat. Miles Straw on deck. A little topper toward first. Rizzo Fields puts the tag on Benson. Miller advances to second, but with two out. Crowd with just one out remaining still has enough energy to let Miles Straw know how they feel about it. He's one for three, flight out, struck out, single. Ball one low. Here's the thing for the Guardians. They win two straight against the Rays. They're competitive in this game against the Yankees. They've scored a total of four runs in the postseason. Is that their offense or does that take into account some of the pitching that they face both the Rays yeah. and here with the Yankees sure but that would be four runs if they don't score here in 33 innings yes. with the 15 inning game in the middle the 2 0 pitch taken for a strike 
Stephen Kwan, who has a homer in this game, is on deck. If he comes to the plate, he's the tying run. In the air to center field. Straw is retired, and that is the last straw tonight for the Guardians. Rizzo had a big game with the glove and with the bat. Cole has been better at various times, but he was generally effective, and he did what the Yankees brought him in here to do. He wins a big October game for them and gets them off on the right foot in the division series. Well, Bader got him on the right foot as well with his home run that tied the game at one after the Quan home run. And Aaron Boone, nice job with that bullpen tonight. That fluid bullpen. Be ready at any time. Day off tomorrow. Game two scheduled for Thursday night here. If they're able to play. Pessimistic about the weather report or the forecast. So we'll see what happens there. But the scheduled pitchers are Shane Bieber and Nestor Cortez Jr. There was some conversation around New York about Cortez starting game one because in fact he has been more effective the last couple of months than Cole. But when you sign an ace and pay him the kind of money they paid him a guy who's twice finished second in the Cy Young voting who might be putting together a Hall of Fame resume it takes a lot not to use him if he's ready in a game like this. He wins his first start at Yankee Stadium in the Yankee uniform. Anthony Rizzo is with Lauren Shahadi. Anthony congratulations you saw plenty of cutters tonight. What do you like about that one in the sixth. And he just he kind of just spun it over there and uh, he was really good tonight. Um, his fastball and his cutter was eating me up personally all night. So um, two strikes put a good swing on it just trying to get judgy in there from third and uh, luckily uh, I put a good swing on it. How the heck would you describe Cole's breaking stuff tonight. Really good. Um, he kind of started having that look on that we talked about a couple days ago. Um, like he's a bully. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, when he gets going like that I love it and uh, that's, that's a great start from him. Uh, good job by our bullpen and just a very well well rounded game for us. Anthony you know what a championship team looks like. How does this team fit the description. Well I think we go down one nothing on the home run. Bader hits a home run who you're not expecting to, to go deep and. Uh, we make a base running play. We have a weird base running play on defense. Um, we just picked each other up all night and uh, we got the job done. Congratulations. Enjoy it. Thank you, Lauren. Appreciate it. Bob. Lauren, thanks so much. Our final score tonight the Yankees four and the Guardians one, and the Yanks are up one nothing in the best of five division series. Coming up next, we'll send it to our Atlanta studio for the MLB postseason closer. For Ron Darling, Lauren Shahadi, and the rest of our TBS crew including Mr. Stats Elliot Kalb upstairs with us in the booth Bob Costa saying so long from Yankee Stadium in the Bronx you've been watching the MLB postseason on TBS exclusive home of the American League Championship Series we'll see you here Thursday night fingers crossed for game two between the Yankees and the Guardians for now so long everybody